The mysterious and secretive police report. The one thing I probably get the most opposite reactions to when I'm at work. Either people are demanding that I take a police report or they tell me to pound sand and they don't want to be involved in a police report no matter what. This begs the question, what's actually in a police report and when do you need one? In this video, I'll teach you what's in a police report and the main reason why we write them coming up. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Mikey Mo. I'm a police officer. On this channel, we talk about the real life aspects of law enforcement and we try to bridge the gaps between some of the misunderstanding and misconceptions of the profession. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. While you're at it, follow me on Instagram for more up-to-date content and some behind the scenes while I'm at work. And lastly, before we get into this video, for all of you who have been asking about the patrol vlogs, I'm going to be making a video real soon talking about those, what happened, and where things stand, so please bear with me. Okay, let's get into this topic. First and foremost, why do we take police reports and what's in them? Well, these kind of go hand in hand because the information that's in them is the exact reason why we take them. I know that sounds kind of silly, but bear with me. This is exactly how I explain reports to the new recruits, and I try to keep it as simple as possible. Essentially, all the police report is, is us listening to a story during an investigation and putting it down on paper so somebody who was not there can read the report later and understand what happened. For the most part, police reports are gonna be set up the same way no matter where you go. They're typically broken into two main parts. First is going to be the data entry portion of the report. We refer to it as the tree. In our system, it's set up to the left-hand side of the screen where you have individual categories such as the subjects, addresses, evidence, phone numbers, so on and so forth, all of the basic core information that's gonna be in this report. As you click on each one of these main topics, it branches out into another subsection. So under the subject section, now you're gonna have name, date of birth, social security number, their address, their phone number. As you go through this process, it continues to branch out and branch out, kind of like the branches on a tree. Hence the term we call it the tree. Now, beyond the basic information that I just explained to you, that's all that's really in a police report. We don't have criminal histories in the police report. We don't have your second cousin's first name in there or any real secretive background personal information about a person. It's essentially just the main demographics of that person and as current of contact information as we can have. That way, if Contact needs to be made with that person, especially the victim of a case, that we can track them down, give them a phone call, go visit them at the house where the detectives can follow up if need be. Other than that basic information, there's really nothing very special or secretive in your typical police report. Now, the second part of the report is going to be the narrative. This is going to be the written form of the report where you take all of the information, the story that you learn from these people during the investigation, and you write it down so somebody who was not there, who was not on scene, can read this report and essentially feel like they're there. A lot of new recruits seem to overcomplicate this process and I'm not exactly sure why, but it is as simple as telling a story to somebody. So the simpler, the better in most cases. Now, granted, you're gonna have some very in-depth investigations like a homicide or a sexual battery, things like that, that you are gonna have to have very detailed oriented information. But on average, your typical police report is, again, like you were talking to one of your friends, you heard their story about the weekend, you wrote it down on paper so one of your friends who wasn't there could read that later and know exactly what Jeff did over the weekend. One of the tricks that I use when I teach my recruits for report writing is I tell them they should be able to write their report, hand it off to their spouse, husband, wife, a friend, somebody who is not a police officer, and that person should be able to read that report and feel like they were there. Now, if that person at the end of reading that report has questions, it means one of two things. Either the recruit or officer did not ask detailed enough questions and it's left holes for somebody to wonder, hey, well, what happened with this? Or if they did ask those questions, they forgot to put that information in the narrative. 
I often joke that police officers are nothing more than glorified secretaries, and when it comes to taking and writing police reports, it couldn't be more accurate. Now, there are various interview techniques, but in reality, what we are there to do is listen to a story from somebody because we weren't there either. So you're going to ask them the questions that you need to know so you know what happened in this event, start to finish. And then all you're gonna do is take that information and write it down. Now, the reason we do this is for the people who are going to read it down the line. Now, usually the first person who reads these are the detectives. Each division of the department, whether it be burglary or economic crimes or crimes against children and family, as an officer writes a report, depending on what that case involves, it's going to get forwarded off to that division. At that point, the detective's going to read the report. Again, they weren't there, so they need to know what happened. And after that, find out if there's any follow-up that they need to do. Maybe the day we were there, we were told that there was video, but they couldn't pull it off their system. So you're going to write that in your report. Now the detective knows, hey, I need to go back to this address and bring my tech guy or do whatever to get the video off of that. Now, if you investigated the entire case, you made an arrest and it was done, the detective's going to read that report and see that there's no other follow-up that they need to do in that case and they will close it out. Now, after that, the report moves on to the criminal side of it, which would be at the state attorney's office. Now, both your state attorney and a public defender or a defense attorney, if they hire a private counsel, are going to read these reports next. Same thing, they weren't there, they're gonna to talk to their client, but they need to know both sides of it. So they're gonna read that report and come up with whatever questions they have to try and help fight this case for the person, or if you're the state attorney, prosecute the case. Now, even though detectives and lawyers are going to be reading these reports, I always teach my recruits to keep it simple. Don't use fancy legal terms or mumbo jumbo or cop terms, things like that to try and sound more impressive or intelligent maybe because nine out of 10 times it comes out being a lot more confusing to read. And for the average reader, again, these attorneys, I always say it, nothing against them. They're just normal people like us. There's nothing that special or fancy about them. They need to be able to read this report and understand it. So I always say the simpler, the better. So that's basically what's in a police report. Nothing too fancy, nothing too exciting, just that basic information so it can be forwarded off to the next person. Now, that brings me to the second portion of this video is when do you actually need a police report? In simple terms, the only time you are going to need a police report is if you are the victim of a crime and you want to move forward with prosecution or you're an involved party in some sort of civil matter that's actually going to go to court, possibly for a civil lawsuit or something along those lines. Those are realistically the only two cases where you actually need a police report, some kind of documentation to back up or tell what happened in a situation for that process further on down the road. Outside of those two situations, a police report does you no good. I can't tell you how many times I go to calls for basic neighbor complaints and when I get there, the people demand that I take a police report. For what? It literally means nothing for me to write down on paper that you and your neighbor Bob hate each other. People seem to have some sort of misunderstanding that if there's a police report involved, it somehow means the matter at hand is much more serious than it actually is. In reality, if I wrote a report about an incident like that, it would get completed, it would get reviewed by one supervisor, and then that's it. It would go off to never, never land of storage in a database somewhere, never to be seen again, never to be looked at, no detectives are gonna see it, no lawyers are gonna see it. It's literally just a data file off in a server somewhere, and, and that's it. It serves nobody any good anywhere and it's just a waste of time and resources on the law enforcement end. Well everyone, that's it in a nutshell. Nothing too fancy. I hope that that clears up a few questions that maybe some of you had or anybody who is curious about a topic like this. It gives you a little insight on what the police report process is and why we do it. If you have any questions or there's something you think I left out in this video, feel free to leave it in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. If you found this video helpful in any way and enjoyed it, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. It helps me know that you guys are enjoying it and to try and keep up things like this. With that being said, if you have any other law enforcement topics that you wanna hear some real life background information to or how things work, 
Leave those in the comments below and I'll try to add it to the list of upcoming videos that I'm gonna make. As always guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and all the support you show me. I know I've been really behind in the videos. I have a lot of things going on here at the house between projects, getting the new studio ready, the baby. It's just overwhelming, but I have not forgotten about you. I definitely wanna keep doing these. Uh, hopefully the next video that I'm gonna do is gonna talk about the patrol vlogs and where things stand with those and why they have been on hold. So I am sorry about that, but I will try to answer all of those questions soon as well. All right, everybody. So until the next video, take really good care of yourselves and stay safe out there. All right. So until the next one, I hope all of you are doing very well and stay safe out there.